Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Connect Church Online. I am so excited and grateful that you've decided to join us for worship today. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to say hello in the comment section of the video. It's encouraging and a blessing uh, to other people to know that you are worshiping here with us because our community is better uh, because you're here and worshiping with us. So thank you so much for joining us uh, online. I know there's many of us uh, who are here worshiping in person, uh, but we're excited for those of you who decided to join us virtually uh, today. I hope the Lord is with you and that you know and feel God's presence. i got a couple of announcements for you. Uh, first is we have our EARC mission event uh, this uh, coming Saturday. Um, we had a good experience yesterday, got some work done, and so this coming Saturday we should be able to get even more done. So if you haven't signed up for that, I'd encourage you to do so. Come out. Uh, we're going to help some uh, folks as we manage, uh, do some flower bed work and all those sorts of things. Uh, that'll be coming up uh, this next Saturday. Also, uh, Mother's Day is coming up here pretty quickly. Mother's Day is going to be a fun day. We've got some surprises planned for all of the, the moms and those who have moms and everybody. Uh, we're going to do a little photo booth and a couple of other things, so we'd love to have you for us or have you join us on Mother's Day. Uh, other than that, I'd like now to encourage you to join us uh, in saying the things that unite us here at Connect Church. This has been such a blessing to me uh, as we worship virtually to know that even though sometimes we have to be divided by physical distance, um, we also are united in the things that we believe, in what we are all about, and and, and the service that we are trying to do with the Lord. So uh, join me in saying uh, the things that make Connect Church, Connect Church. Here we go. Here at Connect Church, our mission is to connect to God and connect to others. And our vision is to share the transforming power of Christ by creating a community, set on making a difference in the world by living out Christ's three greats, the great commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, the commandment of great compassion. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And the great commission. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And while these are the things that unite us here at Connect Church, we are also united with Christians around the world. And so each week we join their voices in saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now as we jump into worship, uh, I just want to invite you to pray with me. Lord God, we thank you so very much for being here with us today. We thank you for your love and your presence and all the gifts that you give to us. We ask now that you move in our community, that you be present with us wherever we are, and allow us to worship you today. In your holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Connect Church Online. Uh, I'm so glad, grateful, thankful uh, that all of you have decided to join us for worship today. I am blessed uh, because you've chosen to worship with us today. Uh, as we jump in today, uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to take a moment and say hello in the comments section of the video, uh, whatever platform you're worshiping with us online. Uh, it's always a good blessing uh, for others uh, to know that you are worshiping here with us. Uh, today, we are going to continue our sermon series called Be Still. Uh, as you know, about a year ago, the world stopped, and many of us who like to move and to be busy with lots of things going on had to slow down. Uh, we spend a lot more time uh, alone or, or with just our close family. We spend a lot more time uh, in our homes and a lot less time being busy, going to things, going places, doing stuff. And for many people, that was a very challenging thing. Uh, it it took a, a major toll on, on mental health of millions of people around the world. And I found it kind of curious because while we are creatures, human beings created to be in community, um, we as followers of Jesus Christ are also supposed to be a people who have the spiritual skill to be in silence with the Lord. We are supposed to be able to go off into a silent place and encounter God and be blessed by that and learn from that and be healed by that. And so I, I got to thinking about it, and I think uh, for the last I don't know, 6,000 years, uh, human beings who wanted to encounter God uh, did it mostly by withdrawing, by going off into a silent place and encountering God there. And I think a lot of us in the, the contemporary world have lost uh, that spiritual skill of being able to go off into the silence, into the solitude, into the quiet, and be present with God. And that's kind of a shame because so many of us need to be able to encounter God in the silence because it's in those moments of stillness and silence that God has always, as, as far back as human beings have been around, God has always encountered people and, and taught us and transformed us. And so what I wanted to do is spend a couple of weeks uh, talking about sort of um, rediscovering some old wisdom, uh, wisdom that our ancestors knew, people who followed, that in order for us to encounter God, one of the best ways that we can do that is in the silence. This is from Matthew 6, verse 6. It says, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, this scripture, this tip from Jesus, is just a quick reference to say that that one of the ways that, that Jesus tells us to pray is to go off into the silence by ourselves, not a big production out of things. And in those silent, quiet, unfancy times, that is where we can encounter God. And that is where God can do some pretty amazing stuff with us. And, and I think today a lot of us pray on our way somewhere. We pray while we're driving. We pray at the store. We pray while we're cooking breakfast. And it's in all those times that we encounter God, which is not a bad thing. We should have a continuing conversation with God. Uh, so it's good to pray while you're driving or shopping or on your way somewhere. Um, but it's also important that we're able to take some special and particular time and withdraw to the quiet places and pray to God. And in those withdrawn quiet places, when we pray to God, God can do some pretty amazing stuff. And so I wanted to talk about, as I said, of recovering some ancient wisdom and you and I rediscovering the importance of being alone in that silent place. Um, 
Last week, if you worshiped here with us online or in person, we talked a little bit about uh, the challenge that I wanted you to do, which was to try to spend 10 to 15 minutes a day in silence with God. And uh, I hope you were able to do that or at least uh, do it a few times. And in those 10 to 15 minutes a day that you spent uh, in silence with God, for those of you who, who did it, I would absolutely love to hear about what that experience was for you. If it was great, if it was torture, uh, if it was peaceful, if it was anxiety provoking, um, what you learned, what you didn't learn. I would love to hear from that uh, from you. If you don't see me in person, uh, if you could uh, email me, adam at connectumc.org or send me a message or something, I'd love to hear uh, about that journey and kind of where you are. It's just a a blessing to me to hear kind of how those things are going on. So anyway, if you could send me that, it will help me understand because I know that starting a new habit, especially if it's not something that you've done before, like being silent with the Lord, can be a little bit challenging. And, And I know especially being in silence with the Lord, the way the world works today, is that it takes, frankly, practice, discipline, and courage to spend silent time with God. If sitting in the silence with God in times of prayer is not something that you've ever done before, then it's going to be a little bit hard to get started. Uh, Today, as we talk about the moments of silence, the primary thing that I want to talk about is times of silent prayer. Um, When we go off alone in the silence, one of the best ways that we can commune with God is prayer. And so uh, this sermon series is about being still. Uh, in the presence of God. And today, in particular, we're going to talk about being still and praying with God. Now, for those of you who have ever tried this before, if you did it this week or some other time, uh, tried to sit down in silence for 10 to 15 minutes and pray, you may have found pretty quickly that it was hard to turn off your mind. Your brain was racing. You began immediately to think about all the different things that you had to do or wanted to do. You began to think about the worries that you may have had, um, the list that you were going to get going on, As soon as you got up, maybe you were daydreaming about uh, all kinds of things that you didn't find particularly helpful. So first I want to say this. If that happened, you did not fail, um, and you shouldn't be discouraged. Uh, Like many other things, it takes, as I said a moment ago, it takes takes practice uh, to be able to do this in a way uh, that's a blessing. I uh, coach my my son's baseball team, and this year we have a whole bunch of, of kids that have never played baseball before, and they're all doing great now. But when we first started the season and began to practice, uh, many of the kids who never had played before couldn't do basic baseball things, feel the ground ball, catch a ball, hit a ball, these sorts of things. The kids who have played for a couple years, they were all a little bit more uh, advanced at some of these basic skills, obviously, because they had done it hundreds, if not thousands of times more. Just like anything, it takes practice to learn how to do something. And spending silent time with God, believe it or not, is a skill that can be learned. It takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of perseverance. The kids who came out for baseball a couple of years ago, uh, who stuck with it, who continued to practice, have been blessed uh, by their ability to do some things now. And spiritually, we sometimes think that we don't have to practice. We should just be able to sit down, spend silent time with God, and it's great, and that's how it works. And it's, it's just not. Um, silent time with God is a spiritual skill that must be practiced. So if you tried it this week and you sat down and all you could think about was all of the different things that you had to go get doing and you said, this is silly, this is not my thing, I'm not doing this anymore, I encourage you to not give up that easily. Just like I tell the little boys that are learning to field ground balls, it takes time, it takes practice, stick with it and you'll get there. So I'm going to tell you, spiritually, Christian, that in order for you to be uh, able to do this very important skill of spending silent time in prayer with God, um, it's going to take some practice. It also takes some courage, just like learning to do anything new. Uh, It's going to take some time of of trial and error and failure and success. Uh, Sitting in silence can be particularly scary because you never know what's going on Uh, up here. You may have to deal with or think about things that you normally try to ignore when you're in the silence. And so I just encourage you to, to persevere Uh, and to find some courage and know that this is a spiritual skill that takes practice, okay? Now, even though it can be hard, and even though it takes practice, I want you to know how important it is to spend silent time in prayer with God. You see, spending alone time with God must be made our priority. 
Mark chapter 1 uh, describes to us a day that Jesus had. And in Mark chapter 1, Jesus had a, a really busy day. It started with him uh, going to the synagogue at Capernaum and teaching. And he taught with great authority, and then a demon-possessed man comes up and, and confronts him, and, and Jesus uh, drives out this demon-possessed man, and then he goes uh, to the home of, of, of uh, Andrew and Peter, and he goes to their home, and he meets with their mother, and he's teaching, and then many people come I'm there and he's healing and teaching and and all of this all day long and so and so Jesus has this this amazingly busy day right any of those things healing and teaching and driving out demons and all of that would be enough for anybody to do in a single day like how was your day Woo, it was busy I had to drive out demons Jesus did it multiple times that day he was teaching he was eating he was healing he was doing all of this stuff and at the end of the day in Mark chapter one uh, it says this or the next day it says that very early in the morning while it was still dark Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. If you watch the pattern of the story of Jesus' life in the Gospels, you will often see that the more busy Jesus is, the more things that he has going on, the more people who need him, the more intentional Jesus is about making sure that he uh, withdraws to a silent and solitary place to be in the presence of God and pray. So oftentimes, when you and I get really busy, the first thing that we cut out of our lives are the things that make us able to deal with busy lives. Our physical, our spiritual, and our emotional health are some of the most important things that enable us to be successful when we are busy. Right? Because when we are busy and have a million different things trying to pull us a million different directions, it can be stressful. And so oftentimes we will cut out the things that enable us to deal with the stress. Instead of taking care of our bodies, we don't. We're too busy. Instead of spending solitary alone time with God in prayer, we don't. We are too busy. And it seems for whatever reason that those are the first things to go when we are arranging our priorities in times of great busyness. Jesus taught us that in order for us to be righteous, Christ-following people that God called us to be, that we should, in fact, make sure that we spend extra time in prayer if we get more busy. Jesus made it a priority to withdraw and spend solitary time with God no matter how busy he got. And I think that you and I really should learn this lesson. The busier we get, the more important it is for us to spend solitary time with God in prayer. So, I just wanted to uh, pitch to you, uh, or present to you, I guess, try to talk you into making a silent time with God in prayer a priority. And so for the rest of today, uh, I want to talk a little bit practically um, about how to do that, about here's some steps that we can take to make sure that you can effectively spend silent time with God in prayer. And we're going to start uh, first by understanding this, that silence is not the lack of noise, but the presence of God. Uh, there's a guy in the Old Testament named Elijah, and he is a great example of someone who knew how to connect with God and be present with God. Uh, and anyways, there, there, there's this story in 1 Kings of how Elijah uh, connected with Jesus. So I'm going to read that. It's 1 Kings 19. He says, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And it's such an interesting story because Elijah hears this great powerful wind and this amazing earthquake. He goes out into the wilderness to encounter God. And he hears all these incredible noises. And it's not until the silence comes that Elijah says, now that, that is the presence of God. So oftentimes we think that silence is the lack of something, a bucket that needs to be filled, an empty place where something needs to be placed. And it's not. 
when we enter into the silence, we're not getting away from everything. We're moving into the presence of God. Um, I have a truck, and every now and again, I like to hook up a trailer to that truck. And when you hook up a trailer to the truck, you cannot hook up a different trailer while the first trailer is still attached. You have to unhook something in order to hook up something else. And so, yes, silence means unhooking some stuff, withdrawing, turning off the phones, the TVs, the, the, the laptops, getting away from the noise, the other people, the demands, and moving into a place in silence. You have to unhook so that you can then hook up to God. But when we move away from those things, it's important that we understand that the silence is not emptiness. The silence is full of the presence of God in a way that the busyness so often is not. So, Last week, after I uh, got done with the sermon, I was talking to a few people about um, what I was talking about today. A lot of people were like, wow, this is really cool, this idea of experiencing God in the silence. And one, one thing that one person said to me was that how, how on earth would, we talked about how Jesus uh, got on a mountainside last week. We talked about how Jesus went up on the mountainside and prayed for a whole night long. And somebody said, how on earth do you pray for an entire night without ceasing? How, how can you have that much stuff that you need to say? How can you have that much stuff that you need to speak? And so it occurred to me that there's something important that everyone needs to learn and understand about prayer, and that is that some of the most powerful prayer time with God does not involve words. Important that we remember that prayer is communication with God, being present with God. Some of the people that we are closest to, one of the great things about those relationships, if you're lucky enough to have one, is that it doesn't always have to be filled with conversation. Sometimes it's okay in the people that you care about the most, the people that you trust the most. Sometimes it's okay to be with them just in the silence. Uh, years ago, I, uh, as a pastor, I get to do some pretty amazing things as far as getting to be with, with people in intimate moments of their lives. And when I was a very young pastor, um, I, uh, one of the uh, early funerals that I did was for a man who had recently passed away. And him and his wife had been married over 60 years, very cool people. And when uh, he passed away, obviously, uh, they'd been with each other most of their lives, and, and she was just devastated. And so I uh, went to the funeral. After the funeral, everybody was, was gone. On, and there was the widow sitting there. And I'm a pretty young pastor, and I'm trying to think of, of what words to say to try to comfort her. I'm trying to think of something important and profound to try to make everything better, and nothing came to mind. There's nothing you can do or say in that moment that's going to take away all the pain and the worry and the fear. And so I sat with her, and we sat, you know, one chair apart, outside next to a grave for well over an hour in the silence. And in that silence, in that time, what I learned is that so much of what we can do to be present with God doesn't involve words. So much of what we can do to be present with other people doesn't involve words. Sometimes there's things that you feel, things that you experience that, that can't quite be described in words just right. And so Christians throughout the history, and especially the ancient Christians, understood and called this the prayer of the heart. They understood that, that sometimes you just had to be present with God, and even if you couldn't put your prayer into words, you could sit there with God and feel what you needed to feel and think what you needed to think and be present with God in that way. Uh, there's a really uh, theologian that I love uh, from the middle of uh, the 1900s. Uh, he, he was named Thomas Merton. Uh, he was a monk, pretty cool guy, writer, theologian, uh, and a very powerful spiritualist. And he talked a lot about prayer. And, he, and one of the things that he said I found very compelling, he said this, it's risky to, it is a risky thing to pray, and the danger is that our prayers get between God and us. The great thing in prayer is not to pray, but to go directly to God. If saying your prayer is an obstacle to prayer, then cut it out. Let Jesus pray. Thank God Jesus is praying. Forget yourself. Enter into the prayer of Jesus. Let him pray in you. The best way to pray is to stop. Let prayer pray within you. Whether you know it or not, this means a deep awareness of our true identity. That by grace, we are Christ. 
our relationship with Christ is that of Christ to the Father in the Spirit. It sounds kind of crazy, but what Thomas Merton's point is, as someone who spent a lot of time in silent prayer with God, what his point is, is that, is that sometimes we can get so wrapped up in what words to say to God when we're praying. We can get so wrapped up in saying things right, respectfully enough, or honestly enough. We can get so wrapped up in those words that the words themselves can actually get in the way of prayer. And sometimes the best way to pray isn't with words, but of simply being in silence with God, praying with our heart, asking for for Jesus to say the things that we can't even think of what to say, asking Jesus to pray on our behalf or for us, asking God to just be present with us, feeling the things that we need to feel. Now, I know that's a really common uh, or uncommon spiritual experience for many people, but it's something that Christians, ancient wisdom, something that Christians for a long time have done have simply sat in the presence of God, knowing that they needed to say something, but not knowing how to say it. And instead of just not praying, they spend that time praying from the heart, not with words, but, but with presence, with feeling, being there with God. And so I want you to know that one of the most powerful ways that, that our ancestors have found to be present with God is not by having the right words to speak in prayer, but by being willing to sit in silence with God, praying and feeling from the heart. Another big practical tip that I want to give to you about how we can do a better job of experiencing this this silent prayer time with God is to understand that place, posture, and attitude are all essential to an effective prayer of the heart. First, I want to start with place. Um, It is uh, very important that we set aside a place, and and I'm going to include time, a time and place where we can be in God's holy presence. This is from Matthew chapter 6. It says, But when you pray, go into your room. We read this at the beginning. Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This room where we go is, is a place where we can set aside to say, I'm going to now go from where I am to over here to be in the presence of God. It is tough to pray at the kitchen table. It is tough to pray while you're doing other things. It's, a kitchen table is fine, but my point is it's, it's very helpful to set aside some sacred space in your home, your yard, somewhere it's very important to set aside some sacred space where you can go that it is designated, this is my prayer space. And the reason that I am in this space is so that I can pray. And Christians throughout history have found that by setting aside special space and special time, they can do a better job praying with God. Acts 3, 1 says, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. Peter and John went to the temple to pray. Psalm 119 says, Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. My point is, is that setting aside time and place can be a very helpful way. So, If you're having a hard time with this spiritual practice, learning how to pray in silence, I encourage you to take a little bit of of a lead from our ancient Christians and, and set aside a time and place where you can go and be silent with the Lord, and that is going to be very helpful for you. The next thing that I mentioned is posture. Um, it is important that we assume an attitude of prayer. I uh, put a list, we'll put it in the sermon notes uh, on the website, and there's also uh, a list in the bulletins. I put together um, a list of six things that the Scripture teaches us about how we can assume a posture of prayer. And so if you're having a hard time uh, focusing or being present with God, uh, then I encourage you to take a little bit of time and think about your posture. Uh, Try out different things depending on the prayer, and these can be very helpful uh, as you try to figure out that silent time with prayer. The third thing that I mentioned was attitude. Our attitude and intentions matter. Um, I have a a friend of mine who uh, uh, used to not come to church. Uh, and the reason that he didn't come to church, he was always say to me, he was a big fisherman and, and hunter. And so he would say to me, I really enjoy, uh, I feel like I'm more in present with God out in nature. So when I go out in nature fishing or when I go out in nature hunting, uh, that is where I feel like I'm present with God. And so I don't need uh, to come to church because that's where I experience God's presence. And I was like, okay. 
And then after uh, a few times, he would, he would miss uh, church because he would be out fishing or hunting or whatever. And the next time I would see him, I would say, hey, what did, what did the Lord say to you when you were out hunting this weekend? What did, what did the Lord say to you? What did you learn about God or your, or your Christian journey? What, what did God teach you? And many times, most of the time, all the time, he would kind of stumble through some answer. And, and after a while, he sort of realized that he wasn't actually experiencing uh, God in a really intentional way when he went out hunting or fishing. He just liked hunting and fishing, which is fine. I like hunting and fishing too. And he liked the quiet, which is fine. I like that too. But he wasn't experiencing God because his attitude, his intention, wasn't to go out and experience God. His attitude and intention was to go out and relax and hunt and fish, which is fine, but it's not the same thing as hunting and fishing. And so our attitude, the thing that we plan to do, the thing that we intend to do, the thing that we set out to do, matters. So, sometimes... When we sit down and we try to pray to God, one of the the most difficult things that we face is our mind wandering. And so I find when I sit in the silence, uh, I find it very helpful to come up with a little mantra. The one that I use is this. When I find my mind wandering, thinking about other things, I will say, Lord, I'm here present with you and I know you're here present with me. And that'll sort of bring me back to center and remind me that I'm here in this moment, in this place, with an attitude of being present with God. And so if God is is speaking to me uh, and has something to say to me, then I'm ready to receive it. And if I uh, can present something to God, then I'm ready to do it instead of uh, my mind wandering about, you know, whatever else that I'm thinking about. And I don't go to a place and a time with the attitude of I'm going to get some fishing and maybe some Jesus while I'm out here. What I do is... When I'm ready to encounter God, I go and do that, and that alone. And by repeating that mantra, by setting aside time and place, by assuming a posture and an attitude of prayer, I find it much easier to spend that intentional time with God in silence. So, if you, less last week, tried to spend some silent prayer time with God and you just couldn't figure it out, I encourage you uh, to think about posture, place, um, and attitude. And if you can try that thing out, I think you're going to have a lot more success encountering God. So here's what I want to kind of leave you with today, and that is this, is that time of silent prayer with God will enable you to experience God's presence in a way that is both unique and essential. I said a lot of stuff today, and it's not all fun. This isn't like flashy fireworks Christianity. Going away and spending silent time with God is not the big, on-fire, amazing, spiritual, on-super moments that so many people talk about wanting to see at church. We've got the music and the lights and I've been to Christian concerts and and all that stuff is cool and wonderful, but there's something special and essential about spending silent time with God. If you have not acquired the skill that our ancient Christians had of spending silent time with God, you are missing out on something special. It is essential that you discover this spiritual skill. And so I encourage you uh, this week uh, to try again. Uh, instead of just spending 10 to 15 minutes, this is your new homework if you're, if you're up for a challenge. Instead of spending just 10 to 15 minutes alone in silence with God, try to spend 10 to 15 minutes in silent prayer time with God. Don't bring your Bible. Don't bring music. Don't bring anything to read or to look at. You and God in silence in, in a prayerful conversation either speaking the words that you need to speak or having a moment of prayer of the heart, find a place, a time, attitude, posture that's appropriate, and spend time with the Lord. And I bet you that you will move down that road and be blessed. Now, some of you are going to find this, you know, this, wow, that was a revelation. That was great. I'm able to do this now, and this is great. Uh, Remember, there's going to be good days and bad days. I talked about the baseball team off the top. Some days when you play baseball, it goes great. (laughs) Other days, it doesn't. So there'll be days of success. Uh, There'll be days that it's a little more hard, and that's okay. That's a part of the process. Uh, But I encourage you to continue to practice this, to learn this spiritual skill because skill because it's essential it's valuable it's important and it's something that god can bless you at so i encourage you as i said to try this week to spend some special time in an attitude of silent prayer with god and let's see what amazing things god does for you in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen
Now we've reached the point in our worship service where I would like to offer you an opportunity to respond. In particular, in this moment, uh, I invite you to respond through your giving. You can click on the link in the description of this video and do your online giving now. If you are a a person in our community who is in need, uh, maybe something has happened uh, due to COVID or something else and you need help, uh, be sure to let us know here at the church office. We want to help if we can, um, but we got to know about it. And so please let us know. But if you are able, uh, we do encourage you to do your giving now. It's through your giving uh, that we are able to answer God's call uh, to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to you each and every week uh, to help our other families who are in need. And so we are grateful uh, for those of you who are able to give um, because it's through your giving that we're able to, to do the things that we do as a community and to bless others. So now may you give, and my prayer is that you are blessed as you bless others. Thank you so very much for joining us here at Connect Church today. As we conclude, I want to give you an opportunity, uh, as we always do, uh, to receive Holy Communion. Uh, Hopefully you have your small single serving communion cups. Uh, If you need any more of those, be sure to contact us here at the church office uh, and we will get those out to you. But if you want to go grab those now, um, we will receive communion together. Let us pray. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and of wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood.
Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever, Almighty Father. Amen. And now, together as a community, uh, let us receive Holy Communion together. I hope now that you've received communion and you know that God is with you, that his presence is filling you up and that all of your sins have been forgiven. And as you go from this place today, may you go in God's peace. May you find him in the silence. May you rediscover the ancient Christian wisdom of silent prayer with God. And may you be blessed knowing that he's with you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.